Welcome to Shades of Migraine, a podcast series created by the Association of Migraine Disorders. Migraine isn't black and white, it's blurry and shadowy, but there are many forces at work trying to change how we think about and deal with this disease. We hope you'll enjoy listening to a wide variety of voices, including the perspectives of both people living with migraine and those that are trying to help. Each will share their unique shade of migraine. For today's episode, AMD's president, Dr. Frederick Godley, interviews Dr. Lucy Rathier, the director of behavioral clinical services at Lifespan and a clinical associate professor of psychiatry and human behavior at Brown Medical School. They'll be discussing how cognitive behavioral therapy, or CBT, can be used in the management of migraine disease and chronic pain. You'll learn how CBT can complement your current migraine treatment plan to potentially reduce the frequency and severity of your migraine attacks. Hello everyone. Today we're going to interview uh, Dr. Lucy Rathier, uh, who's a psychologist that specializes in cognitive behavioral therapy. And we're particularly interested in how that will apply to the disease of migraine. Uh, Dr. Rathier, can you please explain your background? Sure, I'm a psychologist and I've been trained in uh, evidence-based treatments for various psychological disorders and also medical conditions. I have a doctorate in counseling psychology from the University at Albany in New York. I did my postdoctoral training at the West Haven uh, Veterans Administration Hospital where I specialized in um, helping people manage pain. Uh, could you explain to me uh, what cognitive behavioral therapy is? Yes, sure. So cognitive behavioral therapy has been around for over 40 years, and it was started by um, a psychiatrist, Dr. Aaron Beck. And one of the main tenets of it is that how we look at the world or how we perceive events in our lives can affect how we respond emotionally, physically, and behaviorally. So the idea is to help people look at thoughts that may not be helpful to them in coping and to find a way to either challenge or restructure the thoughts so that they're more helpful to them. And the, the main change agent is not the thought in and of itself, is that the thought leads to a more helpful and adaptive coping behavior. So in its initial form, it was applied mostly to people with behavioral health issues like uh, depression and anxiety. But over the course of time, it became applied to many different uh, chronic medical conditions like obesity, chronic pain, headache, um, diabetes, self-management, a, a whole host of different research projects on its application to various medical conditions. It might help uh, us all understand if you could explain what it, would it be like coming to a first uh, meeting with you? So um, I like to do a very thorough assessment so that I can understand exactly what the factors are that are impinging upon someone's migraine and what they've tried to date and what worked and didn't work. So um, the patients are given a very lengthy questionnaire to fill out in advance and bring to their first appointment that discusses you know, what they feel triggers the migraines, uh, looks at their health maintenance behaviors like eating habits, sleep habits, exercise, um, in terms of how they adhere to the treatments they've been prescribed before and if there's anything that might get in the way of their adherence of treatments like the cost of medications or transportation issues getting to appointments or just having some challenges in relating to their medical providers. So I really like to do you know get a lot of that background information and then I do a clinical interview um, to see whether or not there are any emotional factors going on. Um, people with migraines have a higher um, prevalence rate of anxiety and depression, which is understandable because certainly uh, it's very stressful to have chronic headaches and it causes a lot of um, disability 
and reduced productivity in their lives. So, you know, it's, it can be very disturbing to people and then they be, can become more anxious and depressed. So I really want to make sure that we are aware of whether that's occurring or not because we want to treat that as well. Um, so we do a very thorough interview and from that I can target some of the initial areas that we want to work on, whether it be uh, sleep habits, stress management, their eating habits, um, are they using medication too much and getting medication overuse headache? In that case, I want to consult with their neurologist to help come up with a treatment plan for that. Um, and so we talk about that and uh, you know what our plan is going forward. Uh, could you explain to me uh, how long sessions usually are and how long the treatment is and how much variation there is between patients? Typically, the sessions are 45 minutes long. Um, I, I take in a collaborative approach, so oftentimes there are multiple factors that impinge upon someone's uh, headache and migraine experience. And so, you know, we might, I might say to the patient, you know, we've noticed sleep habits, we noticed eating habits, we noticed you're having some unhelpful thoughts. What, what do you want to do first? You know, because we're going to have to approach all the factors anyway. So if they're invested in one particular factor first, you know, I'm happy to do that. If there's no major preference, then I might use my experience and expertise to come up with what we think we want to handle first. So when I work individually with patients, it really is tailored to their needs, their lifestyle, what the presenting factors are in their migraine experience. Um, so, you know, the answer in psychology is always, it depends. <laughs> yeah, which is fair enough. So, which is fair enough. So if there's a patient that presents with headache that doesn't have a comorbid anxiety disorder or comorbid depression, so it's functioning pretty well, but maybe has some lifestyle factors. Treatment could be as little as six sessions. However, if it's, as it gets more complex, more stress, more stress in their lives, you know, an anxiety disorder, depression, we have to treat that as well. So it could, you know, be longer and, you know, potentially go up to 12 or more sessions depending on, you know, what is going on in that person's life. Could you give me some expectation as a patient of uh, the, my chances of success uh, going through a program like this? So the research shows um, that patients um, that get CBT alone for headache treatment find um, a decrease in headache activity from 30 to 60 percent. And in my experience, most patients um, do see at least that. Provided that they follow through on the strategies on a regular, consistent basis. So for example, if I'm teaching uh, autogenic relaxation, which is really a very uh, strong evidence-based treatment for migraines, it's something that they have to practice daily. They have to learn to train their body to be more relaxed and uh, lower their sympathetic tone, which is sort of calming down their nervous system and um, you know, reducing muscle tension. And so that's not something that is accomplished just by once a week kind of treatment. So the, the time it takes on a daily basis to do the, the strategy but can be you know, 15 to 20 minutes a day, but it has to be done regularly for the results to show. Do any patients uh, pop into your mind who uh, were uh, responded to this in a way th uh, that you didn't expect? Well, one of my favorite cases to talk about was the case in which I felt like I cured someone because you don't often claim that you cure anyone. We're just trying to help reduce the headaches, so I use cure in quotation marks, but I had a gentleman when I was in my fellowship at the VA, and he was a lovely man, um, and he had horrible headaches and migraines every day. And um, come to find out that he smoked a pack of cigarettes a day. When he got home, he would play video games, uh, drink a 12-pack of regular Pepsi, 
and played the video games till about 10 o'clock and then he couldn't get to sleep and so it took him a long time to get to sleep so his uh, length of sleep was shortened and then every day he'd wake up with a horrible headache that lasted through the day. So he was a very motivated patient and we helped him quit smoking. We helped him to re reduce caffeine without going through caffeine withdrawal, which can bring on more headaches. Um, improved his sleep habits, so he had to cut down his video game time and stop by eight o'clock, and we taught him some other sleep strategies, uh, like you know, a, a wind down activity of taking a shower before bedtime and such. Um, we did a lot of other stress management techniques and re relaxation techniques as well to kind of support all those things. Didn't have headaches again. But that is in some ways uh, what you're doing, is you're really trying to be that super ego yes. uh, for people and well, to do the right thing and, and learn in a stepwise fashion exactly to do the right, right. thing. And yeah. many times people don't realize that their sleep habits affect their headache. Um, or that their eating habits affect their headaches because a lot of times people skip meals or don't consume enough uh, water so they get dehydrated and all those things bring on headaches and migraines. And Dr. Rothier, have you uh, had any patients who have a history of head trauma yeah. uh, and headaches and could yeah. you explain a bit your experience with those types of patients? So yes, people who have suffered concussions or head injuries, head injuries in motor vehicle accidents. And um, again, I think that that's because there could be some structural damage that's a little bit more challenging um, in terms of you know, reducing the headache frequency, duration, and intensity. Um, however, um, the relaxation exercises can help to a certain degree. Um, certainly because of how the headache affects someone's life, typically every facet of their life, that could cause more stress and depression. And so we certainly want to see people that present with that because those things are only gonna worsen a headache episode. So we may not be able to totally get rid of headache episodes, but we can certainly reduce the frequency somewhat even with someone that you know, has had a head injury. Um, and we want to make sure that they are experiencing the quality of life that they want to enjoy. And so anything that we can do to support that would be important. Can you think of anything else that, um, that you would want people to know about what you do um, that we haven't touched on? You know, one of the other things that we work on is assertiveness skills. You know, letting people know that you have a health problem it's a legitimate need and you know, in, in helping uh, them to understand it and advocating for yourself that you know, to get changes uh, in the workplace, even asking the person next to you not to wear perfume or what have you. Um, in terms of other um, uh, treatment uh, options in terms of psychology, one of the newer um, versions of uh, cognitive behavioral therapy is called acceptance and commitment therapy. And so uh, sometimes I integrate that in with um, my treatment of traditional CBT. And that is really kind of, again, going back to looking at the quality of the life that one wants to have. What are my values? How do I want to be in my life? You know, I want to be healthy and active. You know, I want to be a a wonderful role model for my kids. Um, because chronic headache can interfere with those values that we hold dear to us, the way we want to live our lives, that can also be very helpful in helping people with chronic headache and chronic pain to you know, not lose sight of those values and let's keep working towards recapturing as much of that life as we can, even if we have to accept the fact that we you know, have migraines or chronic pain and you know, it may not 100% go away. In an upcoming episode, we'll hear more on this topic from Dr. Rathier. She will discuss a comprehensive treatment approach, insurance reimbursements for CBT treatment, the use of biofeedback, migraine in the workplace, and more. And thank you for tuning in to Shades of Migraine. For more information about migraine disease, please visit migrainedisorders.org.